thank you very much for sticking with us. We appreciate it. I'd like to switch gears a little bit. Um, as Norman pointed out earlier, is that there is no one tool. There is no one universal tool that just works for everybody. And a lot of people have brought up Avid. In fact, uh, one of our sponsors tonight is Avid. But there's a lot of tools out there. There's Premiere, which you also mentioned. There's also up-and-comers like Sony Vegas, for example. Um, what other, uh, this is probably one of the first times that they'll have the ability to try to kind of knock Final Cut out of its place in the industry. Right? Some people will just be fed up and say, I don't want to work with Final Cut anymore. I don't like the direction this is going. So what company or what other alternative to Final Cut do you think has the, the best chance of, of reclaiming a larger place, uh, a footprint in the industry right now? Avid. Uh, it's what people used to use, and it's what people are going to remember was good before they switched to Final Cut. Um, now, do you mean Hollywood, or do you mean nationally in the U.S., oh, or I, I was thinking I was thinking uh, Hollywood, I guess, but uh, what are people who haven't edited before going to be using? Or I, Well, from my experience talking with people, the, the transition from Final Cut to Premiere, obviously, you know, where it started, is a, lot, a, a much easier transition to make than jumping from Final Cut to Avid, if you've never known Avid. Mm -hmm. But who has more power? Who has more market share already? Well, Avid has a pretty good foothold. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm wondering both for what you're doing as well as you know, for the rest of the general public who isn't within the 20 mile radius of Hollywood, mm -hmm. uh, what would be the solution for them? Well, you know, I can speak a little bit. I just got back from a conference of um, US-wide university video and film professors. And uh, because they know that I'm an editor, lots of people were asking me, what are you doing about Final Cut now? There's a lot of them, so many education uh, the market on Final Cut. And this, I'm not talking just Chicago, New York, LA. I, I'm talking about small towns all over. Um, and uh, many, many, many of them are looking to jump. And many, many of them are looking to premiere. Um, there are a good number of them because of how aggressive Avid's education prices that are looking at media composer as well. But um, a lot of them are liking the suite, the premier suite. Uh, I don't hear anybody, nobody was talking about anything outside of those three. Not, not a single person mentioned Vegas. Uh, uh, some people talked about the company that we don't know right now, maybe along the line of what you were talking about before the break. Uh, so I think at least in terms of the education market, uh, we're looking a lot of premier, oh, of the people who want to jump, uh, premier and lesser avid. Can you ask the question again? There was something about the question that I wanted to touch on. I can certainly try. I tend to ramble. Oh. Uh, so Final Cut obviously has a very large trunk, uh, trunk, large uh, percentage or chunk of the post industry, whether it be here in Hollywood or whether it be nationally or even across the, uh, across the globe. So there are going to be a lot of individuals who said, you know what, we, we don't want to make the jump. We're done. We're, we don't like the way Apple's treated us, or we just don't like Final Cut 10. So that leaves an ability for other companies, other editing companies, to take back what maybe was theirs to begin with, or grab a new chunk of the market share. And so my, my question was, what company do you think is best poised, who has the best tool set to do this, both, both locally as well as um, outside this 20 mile radius? That's a good, it is a good question. I just wanted to make sure I got it. And I think the answer I'm going to say is sort of uh, uh, agnostic, because uh, look at it like this. One of the things I find really fascinating about society is people who are in in the community have a way in which we identify or uh, ex assume people behave that are outside of our community. A good example of this is you'll find that Democrats and Republicans in the House and the Senate, we like to think that they fight it all day long and they argue about everything. When if you work in Washington, you deal with them, they're with their friends and they hang out and they're part of each other's lives and they communicate. Similarly, in terms of uh, the media world, I've had a, a, a lot of great opportunities to work with engineers, and I learned very quickly, engineers are massive fans of other engineers, that they get along, and they're impressed by each other, and they buy each other's stuff, and they take it apart, mm -hmm. not because they have a hatred for it or they want to, you know, burn the flag kind of thing. It, it's because they want to, it, they endorse these other people's ideas and that's how they collaborate together. I think the, the community 
divergence between who uses what and what is represented by who, let's not talk about editing programs, who shoots on one camera versus another camera, something like that. That doesn't exist in the engineering room mm -hmm. as much as it does in the field of usage. So the answer to the question of which companies can be able to capitalize on, on something like this is the one that recognizes the good things that Final Cut 10 has brought and recognizes the bad things that it has brought and manages to take all the good things and put it into their program. Simply using Final Cut 10 tripping on a, a bad release and a mismanaged sort of beginning steps, using that as a springboard to promote your program is the loser. The winner is the person that dissects it, learns it, understands it, figures out what is so unique about this. How can we be talking, how is this panel happening about an editing program, you know what I mean? Like this is profound, there's something profound about this, that this conversation is at this level. Figure out what those profound things are, adapt them, use them, modify them, that's the company that will win. So you're talking evolution to some degree. Uh, one of my first editing, uh, digital editing experiences was on Lightworks which was an amazing program back when, on average, you couldn't even cut on the timeline. And they looked over the shoulder of Lightworks and said, holy crap, you can cut on the timeline, that's a good idea. And then um, I think each program builds on another one, and that's just natural evolution. I think that's a good thing. You know, Michael, I'm very impressed with the depth of your thought. And I was just reflecting on something you said, is why is a change in an editing program at this level? And it suddenly struck me that what we do is we tell stories. And the problem is, is that telling stories visually, as you know, is incredibly difficult. And the, the better you tell the story, the harder it gets. Mm -hmm. And what's just happened is, is that in order for us to really live in this environment, we really have to passionately care mm -hmm. about telling stories because the pain level is too high. Mm -hmm. One of the key things that we use to tell stories just changed. It isn't that the tool changed, it's that it's affected our ability to tell stories and it's raised our pain threshold. So the reason it's at this level is not that a piece of software has been updated or not updated, but it has imperiled our perception of what we do for a living, not just in terms of how our business is run, but in terms of what it is that drives us to do what we do, which is tell stories. In terms of perception, you know, which is, I think that's the key word there, because in reality, I'm gonna continue cutting on Final Cut 7. And if I need to, I have Kona boards in my machines, and I can pretty easily you know, shift to another product that's already on my systems. And you know, eventually, you know, obviously there's a paradigm shift here, but I think you've seen it with Habit, for example, moving closer toward Final Cut. And, and now this, this new change that we're sort of on a new path to find what's, what's new. But as of right now, you know, every, everything that we own still, still does work. So the change in perception is, you know, I, I think, guess is why I, we're I think what's also important is that we don't have to give up seven yet. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm never, ever advocating anybody do anything that jeopardizes their business. The number one thing we have to do is feed our families and pay the rent. So you have to decide what your level of pain is. But Apple has said and that this is the beginning of a piece of development. They said that they're going to have an update in August. They said they're going to have another update in September, and they'll have another update in October. The budget process starts in October and November to decide how we're going to spend our editing dollars next year. My sense is stay with Final Cut 7 for those of you that, that are on it. Wait for the update. And let's see, because in September, when Apple does their next big thing, whatever that is, that's going to be the telegraph that says, this is where we're really going. Right now, I'm willing to accept that it's a dot zero release. There's a lot of stuff that didn't get turned on. Let's see what happens with the dot one release when that shows up in September. And then we can say, yes, it really is designed for this market or that market or the third mm -hmm. market. And that still gives us time to do budget dollars for next year to say we are going to move to yep. Premiere, we're going to move to Avid, or we're going to stay with Final Cut 7, or Final Cut 10 meets our needs, we're going to jump to Final Cut 10. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the, the key is, is slow your heart rate down for just a bit, continue the way you are, <laughs> make a decision in, in the 
cold light of day, not in the heat of passion, because sometimes in the heat of passion you make the wrong decision. And maybe the wrong decision is to jump, and maybe the wrong decision is to stay, but give yourself time to think about it. Which is, if I could just abbreviate yeah. something that you said, you said, I'll still continue to cut on Final Cut 7. I think the abbreviation is that is I'll still continue to cut. Um, <laughs> and that's what we do. We talked about tools, and frankly, as Larry so adroitly pointed out before, I'm really, really old, so I remember cutting on film, on 35 mil, and uh, do I prefer cutting digitally? You bet your ass, but that um, <laughs> if someone came to me and said, here's a project that uh, we're cutting on film, um, you want to cut it, and I like the project, I would say, damn yeah, yep. um, just let me keep cutting. Sure. Well, speaking of tools, I'm required to take another break. So while we take a break, what I'd like you to do is so we're going to be asking questions of, the, uh, of all of you out on the interwebs as well as people in the audience here. So if you have access to Twitter and you want to send us a question, send it to hashtag the Final Cut event, and we'll be answering them in a few minutes. We'll be right back. Media composers definitely made large strides towards working well with others. Avid is basically giving us new tools every six months now. I run into RAD, I run into ABCHD, I run into P2, XCAM more and more, Canon 5D, 7D, and all flavors of QuickTimes. The idea that someone can hand you RED files or QuickTime files or whatever, and you can just preview them and you can just edit with them right then and there is just it's a real milestone. If you're using the smart tool, it's like you feel it more in your hands. Your tool self-selects depending on the position of the cursor. It knows what you want to do. You'd have to go back 15 years to see this much development, this much excitement, and this much change in such a short period of time. It's very future-oriented, and I think it does it in a way that's slicker than the competition. Thank you.